Hello, everyone. My name is Tanya Merrill, and I'm an agricultural science student here at Cornell, class of 2015. I'm here to share with you my project uh, as an intern at Arnott Forest over the summer of 2013, doing work for my project advisor, Christy Goodale, on how large storm events affect streamwater chemistry. I'll start by talking about the purpose of the project and then sharing with you our sampling location, our sampling methods, what we tested, and finally our results and some conclusions to be drawn upon with our results. So the purpose of this project is to look at how a changing climate in the Northeast is affecting how nutrients cycle in forested ecosystems. We care about this because there is an undeniable increase in mean temperature happening in the Northeast. This increase in temperature is bringing more high intensity storm events in addition to extending the growing season. In forested ecosystems, Large rain events tend to either flush out or dilute soluble nutrients. There is a strong interest in how these events are affecting the nitrogen cycle. For example, large rain events can flush away soluble nutrients from soil surfaces and also can affect microbial processes. We all know that soil moisture, temperature, and nutrient availability can affect how microbes work, how fast they can work, and how well they can work on decomposing organic material and overall affecting the nitrogen cycle. So, our location, we were based at Pine Creek, located at Arnott Forest, where we had a wonderful small pool in Pine Creek to work with um, in order to get wonderful uh, hydrology measurements in addition to having a great place to set up our machine. The device we use is called an ISCO automated sampler, which was a machine that would pull in and store um, stream water samples for us. Uh, this machine was programmed to start pulling in stream water samples when the height of the stream would increase by approximately two to three millimeters. The ISCO was programmed to run for a 24 hour cycle where it would pull in a sample every 10 minutes, making six samples an hour and one bottle per hour. So in other words, upon completion of its program, we would have 24 bottles to work with. Samples were tested for dissolved organic carbon, or DOC, total nitrogen, chloride, sulfate, and nitrate ions, in addition to pH. Here is a graph of the overall uh, stream discharge over the course of the summer, so from May 13th to August 10th. As you can see, this was a perfect summer to do this project. We had lots of wonderful large rain events and loads of samples to work with, which is always wonderful when doing research. But for this presentation, I'd like to share with you the two largest rain events of the summer. The first one was July 1st, and the second one was August 8th. So just to remind us, what we're, what we're curious about is what exactly is happening to nutrients in the forests and in the streams when we have a stream that is, goes from looking like this, which this is an example of base flow, to looking like this, which this picture was taken on August 9th during 
perhaps the biggest rain event of the whole summer. So this is an example of high flow. So to start, let's look at DOC, or dissolved organic carbon. The blue line represents the discharge data over the course of that storm. Uh, this storm lasted for approximately three days, starting on June 30th and running to July 3rd. So the ISCO ran three complete samples, three complete cycles. So this is the data for the July 1st storm, and this is, this is the data for the other large rain events, which also had the ISCO run for three cycles, um, the August 8th event. And we see with both of these storms that EOC flushes consistent to the discharge. Second is total nitrogen, which for once again, the July 1st storm and the August 8th storm, we see that total nitrogen also similar to DOC, flush is consistent with the stream discharge. Next is nitrate, which is particularly interesting considering that it plays a very important part in uh, uh, for plant growth and overall the nitrogen cycle. So for both the uh, July 1st event and the August 8th event, we see that nitrate is present at the start, but it is quickly flushed out completely. We, uh, we'd see nitrate for a little while on a steady decline, but quickly it was, we, we started seeing zero readings for the remainder of the storm. There was no comeback of, nit of nitrate. Um, next is the chloride ions, where we see a bit of a different response here. Again, the July 1st event and the August 8th event, where we see that um, upon the start of the event, the ions tend to start to decline a little bit, but once discharge becomes really high, the concentration of ions decreases. But as the discharge begins to decrease or as the event is coming to an end, the concentration of ions continues to rise. We see a similar response for sulfate ions, pretty much the exact same response. Again, August storm, and here again is the July storm, where when stream discharge is at its peak, the concentration of ions is at its lowest point. But as discharge begins to decrease and the storm is coming to an end, the concentration of sulfate ions begins to stabilize and, and um, work its way back to where it was prior to the event. Lastly was pH, and the abundance of hydrogen ions, this is the August storm and the July storm, the abundance of hydrogen ions uh, for all of our storm events across the summer was very variable. Uh, there was no real trend um, in pH with the flushing out of um, other nutrients in the, in the streams. So. That's pretty interesting. Um, so to conclude, some of the things we were able to say upon the completion of this project is that dissolved organic carbon and total nitrogen, they flush consistent to the discharge. So however much water is moving through the system is just as much uh, DOC and TN that is also running through the system. This is important because we know that with the high, the more intense the rain event, the more that we're going to see a flushing out of DOC and TN in the streams. 
Second is nitrate, which for all of our events is present at the start, but it quickly becomes flushed out completely. This is important because it means that with every large rain event, nitrate is getting flushed out completely and is no longer present in the forest uh, to a point. Um, so we thought that response was very interesting and it's very important for the nitrogen cycle. The chloride and sulfate ions are actually measured as um, a concentration. So these ions have a dilution response. So uh, the more water in the system, obviously the less concentrated these ions are going to be. But as the discharge goes down, as the storm is coming to an end, the concentration of chloride and sulfate are able to increase and try to make their way back to where they were prior to the event. And lastly, uh, pH was variable uh, throughout all of our storm events. So with that, I'd like to conclude this presentation. And I'd like to thank everyone that made this summer really enjoyable and educational and meaningful. And those people include Christy Goodale, Glenn Fredrickson, and all of the Goodale Lab crew that helped me with my samples and testing. And of course, the uh, folks at the Arnott, Pete Smallage, Kathy Coates, and Don Schoffler, who really work to make the Arnott a beautiful place to be. So thank you, everyone. button here. I had to try it a couple times, but it's still going like I pressed